I remember one time coming home and the nanny telling me that she has been told that my sons should not go out. People, parents, please lock your doors. Those who don't want my sons to get into their houses, please always keep your door locked because there is no way I'm going to close my children in the house. Targeted everything, our time, our resources, our energies towards eliminating this monster. Each boy was moving separately and not getting together and uh, you could see that the attention span or the attention was very limited. As they grew up, we realized that these boys are just too active. By then, I would have expected when I call Eric, Lenny or Rick, they would be able to respond. So I thought it's because the three of them, no one knows their names. The boys also didn't seem like they were recognizing their mother. We expected them to have developed speech by three years, but they did not. We went to different doctors, we went to different hospitals, and when I brought it up, they were like, oh, no, 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 don't worry. It's because they are boys, they are triplets, they were premature. I would be walking out and I'm like, bye. And no child is crying, no child is waving back by. And by then, for sure, I knew that they should be doing that. The children had this behavior of disappearing. In fact, Eric disappeared three times in the middle of the night. The biting, the spitting, the scratching. How are we going to stop this behavior? Eric! We went to see the neurologist, and in five minutes, he said, his children are autistic. From that moment on, I remember thinking each day, each week, each month. I remember thinking, what will happen to my sons when they grow up? I remember thinking of all those people we see in the streets and we call them mad. As parents, it was very traumatizing. First of all, we didn't understand what autistic means. So I decided to really get to read a lot about autism. We came to understand what it requires. A lot of occupational therapy, physiotherapy. I tried uh, diets, GFC, casein-free, gluten-free. I kept on seeing the neurosurgeon. What he was prescribed was only medication to keep the boys calm and it wasn't helping them. I remember the first time I read about stem cell. I was like, wow, this is really good. About Neurogen, because now there was the flyer. I was like, wow, India is just near home. And then someone is coming here to talk to us about it. So I was really very excited. Last year, we had Dr. Alok Sharma come to Nairobi and give a lecture. There are 70 million autistic kids in this world. There was no treatment for them. But today with stem cell therapy, we at Neurogen have been able to treat over a thousand children and many of them have gone back to a normal life, to a normal school. Before even we left the meeting, my husband was like, let's go next week. Our journey to Neurogen was very smooth and very pleasant. We were received at the airport. The infrastructure that they have, that already gives you a good sense of safety and being taken care of. Their therapy rooms are like, wow. I looked at them, I was like, if I had money, I would stay here for four months. You really get to have your child assessed by all these different people who are all looking at different aspects. I had never gone through such a kind of an assessment. The day of the stem cell itself came. Actually, I was a bit anxious, of course, but really I didn't have fear. A bit of apprehension, anxiety, of course, as a mother, but I knew they're in good hands. After stem cell, we went now for our usual therapies. 
I like the fact that they are using a multidisciplinary approach. They have all these departments, special education, ABA, occupation department, psychology, nutrition, physiotherapy, speech therapy. All these things under one roof. The children now are able to get much more and make more faster progress. STEM Self has really unclipped our wings. It's like now there's freedom to fly. STEM Cell has given my sons a new lease of life. After the day of the STEM Cell, we are seated there, Eric trying to sneak out of the door, and Rick is on the other corner and he goes like, Eric, come back, Eric, where are you going? Come back. And we all froze, we are like, did you guys hear that or is it just my, my imagination? Ricky, who had uh, one word and occasionally two words, he did a, a five-word sentence and all very well placed. The boys have calmed down, have increased their attention span. Tell me number seven. Where is it? Seven. Lenny wanted to keep hugging you, to keep holding you, touching your face. His fingers suddenly could be able to coordinate. His mood swing really changed. Eric now is able to stay outside of the house unaccompanied. The children didn't know when a car is coming, it's supposed to move away. They used to move to one side. Right now, they are moving away. Like, boy, this is dangerous. Their social interaction has really grown. Occasionally, I see the boys now tickling each other. It's like suddenly they are realizing, oh, we are here together. They will even hold hands and do their favorite song of a ring, a ring of roses. It's like magic. Miracle was happening because when they came back, there was a big difference in the boys. Eric was, was there able to express himself as much as he would not talk. Yes? What? How much? Well Ricky was just like something else. It would come, hi, Mama Shikon. I'm like, all right, this is Ricky. <laughs> 